Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 24. First question today is basic arithmetic. A company sold a total of $1,370 in toothbrushes. If a toothbrush cost $2.50 each, how many toothbrushes were sold? All right, so what you're going to do here is, first of all, you're going to look at the total number um, of dollars sold, right, which was $1,3370, and divide it by the dollar price per unit, okay? So we know that it's $2.50 per uh, toothbrush. And then that's going to give you the number of units or brushes uh, sold, which in this case is 548. Uh, Answer B. Okay, so question two is an applied arithmetic question that looks at line graphs. Um, and I wanted to do this because we haven't gone over line graphs for a really long time. It says, the graph represents the cost of a product over the past 15 years. In 2010, the product cost was what fraction of the cost in 2020? All right, so before we dive into the question, let's re remind ourselves how we read line graphs. So the first thing you're going to read is the title because this gives you an indication of what you're looking at. So it's telling you that we're looking at the price, price of a product from 2005 to 2020. Then you're going to look at your vertical axis or your y-axis, and that's telling you that this represents the price in dollars. Okay, so the price started at zero dollars, it um, and then it went the highest price is eighty. Okay, so twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. And then you're going to look at your horizontal axis or the x-axis, and you can see that it tells the number of years starting from 2005 to 2010, 2015, 2020. And then the line, the black line in the center of the graph, this is showing you how that the price of that product has evolved or changed from the year 2005 to the year 2020. All right, so the question is, in 2010, the product cost was what fraction of the cost in 2020? So here what you have to do is we're just going to focus on those two dates. So the price in 2020, which you can see is $80, okay, if you follow it to the left, um, to the axis on the left. And then if you go to the year 2010, and then you follow that line to the left, it was $40 in 2010. Okay, so if we want to know the fraction of the cost, what we would do is take those two values, the value of $40 for 2010, and the value of $80 in 2020, and that gives us one half, okay? So the cost of the product in 2010 was one half of what it cost in 2020. Okay, so your answer is C. Question three is an algebra problem. It says, which of the following is a solution for the quadratic equation? So they're giving you a quadratic equation, 2x squared plus x minus 15 equals zero and they want to know which value of x would make that true. Okay, so this problem is not hard, but it can be sometimes a little bit um, time consuming in the sense that in the answers that they give you, all you have to do is take those answers and plug them in into your equation until you get one that would make that equation correct, okay? So um, as I said, this can be a little bit time consuming. So let's start with the first answer, which is minus three. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that minus 3 and pretend that that's the value of x. So wherever we see an x in the equation, we're going to plug in minus 3 to see if it works. Okay, so um, instead of 2x squared, we're going to put 2 minus 3 squared plus minus 3 minus 15. Okay, so if we solve for your um, exponents first, minus 3 squared is the same thing as saying minus 3 times minus 3, which would be 9. So now we have 2 times 9 plus minus 3 minus 15. 2 times 9 is 9, 18, and then we have plus minus 3 and minus 15, and this gives us 18 plus negative 18 is equal to 0. Is that expression correct? 
absolutely. Okay, so our correct answer would be A. So in this case, I put the answer at the top so that we didn't have to go through all of them. But in the exam, you might find that they put the answer hidden somewhere and you have to do um, a little bit of legwork until you get to it. Okay, so um, a little bit time consuming, but not uh, hard. Just make sure that you keep track of your positive and negative signs. Okay, so that you get the correct answer. All right, question four, another algebra problem that looks at inequalities. And it says, solve the following inequality. 45 is greater than 3 multiplied by x minus 15. All right, so the first thing that I want to say about inequalities, sometimes people look at that greater than symbol or less than symbol, and it makes people very nervous because they're like, what am I supposed to do now? You're supposed to ignore it. Imagine it says 45 is equal to 3, okay? You have you don't have to do anything with it, all right? It's just kind of there to, to you know, it kind of intimidates people, but it, it, it doesn't mean anything, all right? So pretend it says 45 is equal to 3 multiplied by x minus 15. All right, second thing you're, you're going to do is you're going to do the right side of your equation. And in order to solve the right side of the equation, we're going to use the distributive property. This means that you're going to take everything outside that bracket, mainly number 3, and you're going to multiply 3 by each of the values inside the bracket. Okay, so we're going to say 3 multiplied by x and 3 multiplied by 15. So 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 15 is 45. So we end up with this expression, okay? 3x minus 45. And now you're all set. From now, um, all you have to do is do what you usually do with your algebra problems. So you would try to isolate that 3x by adding a positive 45 on the right side. And remember, you have to do the same thing on the left side now. And we're doing this because minus 45 plus 45 is gonna equal zero, so we can cancel that out. And then 45 plus 45 on the left side is 90, greater than 3x. All right, and now the last step. How do we isolate that um, x? Well, if we divide that 3x by 3, 3x divided by 3 would give us 1. So that's a way to isolate it. So remember that you have to do both things, uh, the same thing on both sides. So we divide by 3 on both sides. And that would give us... 30 is greater than x, which is option C. The last problem is a geometry problem that looks at perimeter of a square. Lisa's garden is shaped like a square. If each side is 3 feet, what is the perimeter of the garden? And they're giving you the shape of the garden, which is a perfect square, and they give you one side, which is 3 feet. Okay, so for these problems, um, just a reminder, these formulas are available to you in the GED test, so you don't have to memorize them, but you must know how to apply them, uh, because these are easy points that if you don't know how to apply the formula, you can basically miss. So make sure that you also spend a little bit of time on this, because again, easy points that you could just miss otherwise. All right, so a perimeter is basically the distance around the garden. So if you were to walk around the perimeter, what you would do is walk along the all the four sides of that garden. And the formula for perimeter is that because it's a square and the sides are equal, you would just multiply those four sides, right, four times the side, okay? They're all the same side um, length, basically. And here they're giving us one side, three feet, and we said that all the sides are going to be equal because it's a square. So you just multiply 4 times 3, and that gives you 12 feet. Okay, so that's all there is to this question. Again, don't miss, miss out on these easy points, um, and make sure that you uh, do a few geometry problems. Make sure you understand how to apply the formulas. Your correct answer um, would be option C. Okay, folks, well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you watching. Hope you have a terrific week. Stay positive and stay strong. Have a good one.